Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I know it's rough in here today. Amen, but I'm winding up. When you understand what slavery has done in this nation and how you are dealing and how we are still wrestling with the residue of slavery, that in the workplace, that man says, get me coffee. She runs as a secretary. Here it is, boss. Is there anything else that you would like done? I think I'd like a glass of water. I'll be right back. Amen. But then when that man goes home, say, honey, can I have a glass of water? You better go in the bathroom. Can you run my water, sweetheart? Run your what have you lost that you think I am your... talking about an oppressed people. We're talking about what oppression. There are people that are losing their marriage, amen. And then they wonder why their man has slipped back into the world, amen. Back to the way that the slave master has designed them to be studs, to go from one woman to the other. Hello. Help us, Jesus. Now, in closing, let me, let, 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 let me just say that I know, I know it got hot in here today, amen. We didn't mean to go this direction like this. We, 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 you know, we, we, we really meant to kind of take it easy today. But oppression has messed us up. Amen. And I know there's some of you women, you're like burnt Lucy's. You've been through it. Amen. You have a whole history. You says, preacher, but you need to sit down for a moment. Let me preach a moment because I have a message that men are no good. I can give you a list and a genealogy. I can share some things with you. I tried a man. He couldn't cut it. He left me dry with three kids. Never paid a bill. <laughs> Let's understand some things about oppression for a moment. In Israel, and let me just sum this up. In, 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 in Exodus chapter 21 and verse 2, it says, If thou buy an Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. In other words, God designed that if a person was going to be enslaved, there was laws concerning slavery. America broke every one of them. That even if a person was to be enslaved, God did not plan that to be a permanent action. He says you'll be enslaved for six years, and in the seventh year you go free. Mm -hmm. The master was also liable to punishment if the master intent was debatable or if a, or if a slave was injured in any way, he was supposed to be free. In Exodus 21, 14, it says, But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guile, thou shalt take him from mine altar that he may die. In Exodus 21, 20, if a man smite his servant or his maid with a rod and he die under his hand, he shall be surely punished. Hello, we're preaching the word. Yeah. 
See, that's why the oppressor didn't want you to read the scriptures. Because, see, you would have taken that scripture and says, wait a minute, uh, uh, Master, 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 I've been here 20 years. I was supposed to be free 14 years ago. If we're living by this book, give me two more minutes. And in Exodus 21 and verse 26, it says, And if a man smite the eye of his servant or the eye of his maid, that it perish, he shall let him go free for his eye's sake. Jesus. Touch your name and say, he's in the word. He's in the word. Touch your name and say, I didn't know they cheated us like this. And verse 27, and if he smite out his manservant tooth or the maidservant tooth, he shall let him go free for his tooth's sake. In other words, even if you served, God wanted you to serve with dignity. That's why America must be judged. Yes. Amen. I know some of you are saying, well, you know, I'm not responsible for what my forefathers did. That's what you think. That's what you say. You know, David didn't think he would be responsible for something that Saul did, but God visited him in David's generation. So now this here is for what Saul did to the Gibeonites. But we weren't around. We didn't vote on that. We weren't with that. I know, but you're a descendant, so you're the sin of your fathers will visit you. And what we are experiencing in this hour with rapes and murders and drugs getting out into suburbia America, amen, and different things that are happening to America globally and the economy changing. It has now come time for pay up for the wages of sin. Now the sins of your fathers are catching up to you. Touch your name and say it's a new day. So now God is taking those that were first and now making them seconds. He's taking those that have been your masters and saying they're going to become your servants. Touch your neighbor and say, it's a new day. Say, I hope you're ready for the crossing. Because if you're not ready, you're going to die on this side of Jordan and you may be wiped out any day because we are getting ready to cross. And I don't know about you, but we are going into that land. And some things are about to be upset because God has raised you up to mess things up. Let everyone stand. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God has raised you up.